I first of all, I hate the word nutrition. Mm-hmm. I actually want it to be banned. I want to hashtag kill nutrition. <laughs> okay. And, you know, the dietitians already hate me. So, you know, let's give them something more to hate. Okay. <laughs> kill nutrition. How's that? All right, and here's why. What is the true purpose of nutrition? The answer is metabolic health. That is the true purpose of nutrition. And I'm not even the one who says that. The World Economic Forum said that in a white paper released last year. Now, full disclosure, I had something to do with that white paper. <laughs> you know, but nonetheless, you know, the World Economic Forum said, you know, if you don't have metabolic health, then none of the rest of it matters. Right. So climate and everything else. I mean, we have to get healthy. Okay. And until we get healthy, everything else is off the table. And the question is, have the precepts of nutrition made us healthy? The answer is very clearly no. So why is that? Well, it's because of the definition of the word. So there are actually three terms that are used indiscriminately and thrown around, and they don't mean the same thing. One word, food science. Second word, nutrition. Third word, metabolic health. They are not the same. Food science is what happens to food between the ground and the mouth. Nutrition is what happens to food between the mouth and the cell. Metabolic health is what happens inside the cell. But all of the diseases that I just rattled off are all intracellular diseases. They're not extracellular diseases. They're intracellular diseases. So what happens to the food, what happens to the nutrition, when it goes into the cell, it doesn't matter that it was nutritive. It matters that it's metabolically healthful. And that takes understanding the science. And so the question is, all right, how do you measure metabolic health? How can you determine the metabolic healthfulness of any given food? Well, there are some markers. There are some ways to do that. There are eight, count them, eight subcellular pathologies that are going on in every one of us all the time. They are the eight aging uh, uh, phenomena. Okay. They're all the subcellular pathologies that contribute to aging. And every one of them is important. The goal is to try to mitigate the negative aspect of those eight. The way I describe it to people is, okay, each one of us has been blessed with a God-given shiny red Ferrari at birth. Okay, And the goal is to keep that Ferrari in perfect working order. But there's a problem. The problem is no insurance policy, and no owner's manual. So how are you going to keep that Ferrari in perfect working order? Well, you have to know the things that can go wrong with it. And you have to be able to attend to those on a routine basis to keep that Ferrari in tip-top condition, lest it end up devolving into a jalopy, which is what most of us are. (laughs) All right. Now, if you had a Ferrari, you would do that. Okay, you would do that. Okay, no one's going to let a Ferrari, you know, go to the, you know, to the junk, junk pile. Okay, absolutely. All right, but that's what you've got. You and the problem is, you know, if you don't know what to do to fix the Ferrari or you know to to keep the Ferrari in perfect working order, that's where it's going to go. All right, so that's that's the issue. So, what are these eight subcellular pathologies? Okay, and understanding those will then explain the true purpose of nutrition. So, number one, glycation. Glucose or fructose binding to proteins, rendering them less flexible and also giving off reactive oxygen species each time. Okay, this would be like in, in the you know in the car analogy, this would be like carbon deposits on your intake manifolds. Number two. Oxidative stress, that would be like rusting, okay, of the body and of the chest. Number three, mitochondrial dysfunction, that would be like having a defective transmission. Number four, be insulin resistance, okay, that would be like 
um, uh, like uh, sand in the gas tank. Number five, the membrane instability. Okay, that would be like a fuel hose. Number six, um, inflammation, having a you know car fire, you know under under the hood. Okay, po possibly because of a uh, rotted fuel hose. <laughs> Number seven, uh, methylation. That would be like having um, uh, 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 build up on your spark plugs, so you have a V2 instead of a V8. And finally, autophagy, okay, which is um, uh, getting recycling all the bad stuff. That would be like having oil sludge. Now, if you had that Ferrari, you would make sure that you cleaned your carbon deposits. You, you know, you know didn't let it rust. You know, and didn't keep it out in the, in, you know, in, in the, in, in the rain and in the, you know, in the salt, you know, to, to rust. Um, you would keep that transmission in perfect working order. You would, um, you know, you, you would do all those things to keep all those things uh, working. Well, it turns out that your body basically goes to pot because of these eight subcellular pathologies. So we have to attend to all eight. So the question is, how do you do that without an owner's manual and without an insurance policy? And the answer is real food. Because every single one of those eight is driven by ultra-processed food. Glycation is driven by glucose and fructose. Oxidative stress is driven by trans fats and fructose. Mitochondrial dysfunction is driven by fructose and um, uh, various other uh, 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 toxins in, in that are in the food. Um, insulin resistance is driven by refined carbohydrate and fructose and branched chain amino acids. Membrane stability is driven by lack of omega 3s. Inflammation is driven by a host of different things, but gluten in some, fructose in some. Um, yeah. Um, uh, you know, various uh, 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 inflammatory proteins, et cetera. Um, uh, uh, methylation okay, is driven by lack of B vitamins. And finally, uh, autophagy is driven by frequent feeding and or um, uh, 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 sugar also. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's uh, autophagy. Okay. So the question is, if you eat right, you should be able to stave off all these eight. So people then say, well, wait a second. What about exercise? Exercise fixes those. And the answer is exercise is for the eight. Hmm. It does not fix all eight. Okay. It does not fix glycation. It does not fix oxidative, oxidative stress. It does not fix membrane stability and does not fix methylation. Okay. But food does. So you cannot run a bad diet. So fixing the food has to be job one for metabolic health. So nutrition is only valuable as it informs metabolic health, but it is one step divorced from it. Mm -hmm. Science is only valuable as it informs metabolic health, and it is two steps divorced from it. <laughs> so understanding the process of metabolic health and what causes it and what you can do about it is really the owner's manual. So that's basically what I'm trying to impart onto people. And when they understand that, then they realize just how important food is.